Hello, um, my name's Joe Glines, and, and we're conducting these interviews here with other auto hockey users and um, my friends and colleagues. And um, I got Jean Lalonde here. Um, Jean, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself real quick? Hello, Joe. Uh, yes, I'm, um, how would I say? I'm an auto hockey developer, so I'm, I'm using auto hockey as mainly auto hockey as a platform to develop freeware applications. Uh, the main one I'm working on is called Quick Access Pop-Up, and uh, it's a freeware, and I do it for, um, for fun. It's my hobby. Uh, actually, I'm kind of semi-retired, but my last job was uh, project management in the IT, in, in information technology, managing uh, intranet uh, application development or implementation. And also, I worked in the media area and the uh, websites. So I was at some point in charge of the websites of uh, Montreal Jazz Festival and a few other uh, projects like, like these. So I have a, a kind of mixed background between uh, communication and technology. In uh, yeah, and, but uh, what we, why we talk together is mainly my, it's my hobby to do some programming. I started very, uh, very. Uh, young in the 80s to work on uh, with these tools and I always continue to do it but sometime for my job but mostly as a hobby not as a job. Well, I, that was actually what I was going to ask you was you mentioned your background in, in IT and I think it was SharePoint right was the one of the one of the things you did a lot of but were you so were you you weren't a, you weren't a programmer right in that? No uh, but I, I am a programmer but and I am a hobbyist programmer. Yeah that sometime used these skills for the job, no. but uh, it was not this. At some point I was manager of the uh, um, Radio Canada, uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, uh, mm. the main TV uh, uh, broadcaster in Canada, public uh, broadcaster. And I was, in, I was the director of the website for uh, this, this organization. But even if I was director with many people working for me, during the night or at the end of the day, I was coding a few things for the website because uh, I had an ID that would be done faster <laughs> by no. doing it myself. So no. at some point I just bypassed some, uh, some official roles and no. doing it just because, and, and you know, in, in these years, it was around 2000, in these years, uh, doing internet development was yeah. a kind of, um, it, w it was not an IT role. IT was not necessarily involved in internet, in websites, all this. So it was something that was a little bit uh, off, off the main, main jobs, if you wish. Yeah. Uh, so, and excuse my English, sometimes I'm looking for my words. Uh, my, main, my first language is French. And um, I'm pretty fluent with uh, IT and management vocab vocabulary, but sometimes I'm looking for my words. Uh, especially when we're talking about uh, daily uh, vocabulary, you know, <laughs> these, these words I do not use uh, necessarily when I'm yeah. doing conferences like with you. Yeah, a lot of people that I'll talk to say that, and, and your English is, is great. It's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and, and actually, so, so tell me, how did you start using AutoHotKey? How did you hear about it? And what was your first use, if you remember? I don't exactly remember, but I used it as um, a key replacement and uh, to build some automation, short automation. But I've done that before with other uh, tools, but be before Windows, in fact, before AutoHotKey. Uh, I started using computers on Apple, so I don't remember Apple II, you know, in the uh, yeah. mid-80s. And I don't remember if there were uh, macro programs at that time, but at some point I switched to IBM XT or XT compatible. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, and there were there were some good tools like uh, those of my age. I don't know if you remember tools like Sidekick. Uh, so they were yeah, you're too young. They were a kind of they are called uh, terminate and stay resident program. It means that your yep. program is launching. And it disappeared from the, the window, but it stays there and there is a hotkey to call it. So Sidekick was called to do a lot of things just to help you manage your, uh, your computer. And one of the programs uh, at that time was SuperKey, then ProKey that uh, was by Borland, the same company who did Sidekick and who did uh, Turbo Pascal. And 
So this tool, um, Proki, was very popular and it was doing that. There was a recorder to record what, what you were doing and an editor to edit the, um, the sequence of codes that were captured and that you could then uh, oh, yeah. adapt to what you wanted to do. Yeah. I, I couldn't say, I would not say it was as evolu as uh, evolve as a sophisticated as auto at key. Mm -hmm. At that time, there was not Windows, so it was uh, DOS-based applications, so much simpler to, to manage and to control yep. than Windows application, but it was kind of the same tool. And then some years later, probably under Windows 3.1, mm -hmm. uh, I, I probably started using auto at key at that time. Mm. So it was somewhere, uh, I don't, when was auto at key written? Do you, do you know when? No, I, I don't recall off the top of my head. So maybe it was in the first years of Auto at Key that I just uh, started uh, uh, using it. And then I, I, I was not a, I didn't use it regularly, but at some point uh, I wanted to develop small programs. And while you're searching for the, <laughs> the, the history of Auto at Key. Yeah. So I wanted to, uh, to do some programs. I, I developed programs using different platforms in the past. Uh, uh, HyperCard on Macintosh or uh, Access, Microsoft Access, that where you can build, build an application based on this uh, database tool. I did a lot of visual, um, uh, not VB, VBA, you know, a visual. Mm -hmm application. So I developed a lot of, but I wanted to make a program that would be a st standalone program and without having to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars to have the tools to do that. Yep. And that's the good thing with Auto at Key is that you can code something, then compile it to an executable file yep. that user do not need to, uh, they don't need to install Auto at Key, they just run the file and, and you can package it in a setup program. So you, all users have to do is to click next, 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 and the program is, is ready to, to be used. So um, I can do this and I do this now and it's completely free. These tools are free, uh, even the packager to the, for the setup program. So, so that's the main use I'm doing now of Auto at Key is as a development platform. The um, incidentally, so the wiki site says the the first public beta of Auto Hockey was released November tenth of two thousand three. Two thousand three. So it was probably Windows ninety five at that point. I'm not sure. The, no, you don't have to go search the history of yeah, Windows no. now. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> because the interview will be looking at you doing right. some history right. search. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, and what's good with Auto at Key is that this this tool is very easy to um, to to use. There are some pitfalls that maybe we, we can talk about, but mm -hmm. uh, it kind of e much easier to learn than um, Visual C or you know these. Uh, oh yeah, it's of yeah. Tools that are of course powerful, but um, you can do a lot with with Auto at Key without having to to learn, to have this big learning curve that you have when you develop using. Uh, yeah, and, and it's, the thing I, one of the things I love about it is you can baby step into it with, with simple things first, and then, you know, you can just keep going as much as, well, I don't know, as much as you want, but um, it, it's pretty amazing what you can keep going up to do, but even noobs, you know, people who've never programmed can, can do something in minutes or seconds, yeah, honestly, yeah, and, yeah. and start using it. And you can benefit from a lot of uh, features or function or modules from Windows just by calling them with a simple command. Mm -hmm. so for example, you want to, uh, to select a file, so you don't have to code much. You just have in one line to say select file, then you pass a few parameters, and auto key will call Windows to use a nice select file dialog box. You know? Which it's a simple example, but there's a lot of examples like that where yeah. you select yeah. an icon for, uh, for so you, there's, you just have to know how to call these functions. Right. And there's a very good um, community using this tool. So yeah. you can go to yeah. the forum, you can go to uh, uh, sites like uh, Stack Overflow or, you know, yeah. so you have a question, you will find an answer by searching or then by asking right. uh, most of the time. And, uh, and there are very advanced features where you will use DLL call, so something that will call Windows, but with, with a very specific f yeah. uh, function or address, or you know, that uh, uh, you need to know these. So 
but there are some developers on the forum that that know this because they use also Microsoft tools, so they're aware of what's available uh, inside uh, Windows, and they help other users to get access to these features. Yeah, I, I know for me when um it's it's been quite a few years now, but I was trying to learn Python and. Um, I, I went at it for about a year and a half to two years, somewhere in there. But what was always amazing to me with Python was like almost nothing comes with the core thing. You have to go get other libraries and, you know, things to to do what you just described was, oh, yeah, they're out there. But then you got to go find them and there's not automatically installed. And then you have to say, are you doing the 64-bit versus 32-bit versus at the yeah. time? It, for me, it was 2.7. Yeah. The yeah. yeah, there's a little bit of that with auto key, but um, just to benefit from libraries that others develop. So instead of recording things like uh, one I've done is how to uh, query a text file in um, in uh, comma separated values yeah. and, and open it and put it in memory, being able to manage to process right. this file and yeah. then saving this file to a CSV file. Right. So doing all this is not built in in auto key. Sure. But once a user builds a way of using it, you can isolate that in the library, a text yeah. file, in fact. And all, you have to, all other people have to do to use it, they just call or in, include this library in their file and in their code. And having said, having yeah. said that, though, I mean, you know, AutoHockey does have normal CSV for basics, right, built into their loop. They're parsing yeah. the so some of it's there, uh, and and just still, my point is, you're right. There's always going to be other stuff that you need to go get that's very specific, but there's so much with the Windows API that it automatically you don't have to go get all these other things. You got to learn how to use it. But it was like, it's just it's it's there, and like you said, also you can compile it. I can right click the thing and say compile, and I'm I'm done. You know, it's 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 amazing. Yeah, and compiling is making it an executable file uh, easy to, to to distribute. Yeah. So, um, I'm curious, why do you think? I mean, I know you and I, and actually, it's interesting because because we we chatted about this a little bit the other day. But um, why don't you think more people automate their their work in general? Like we we keep saying. You know, we, we, I, I think I'm a big advocate of QAP, the quick access pop-up, your other tool, right? That I'm like, it's amazing in like almost virtually anybody using a Windows computer should be using this or something like this to, to be faster and more efficient, right? Someone, I used said, to, someone said it should be built in with Windows. I, 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 yeah, but I'm then like, I yeah. will lose my, my, my users because yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. my tool would become irrelevant. Well, but, 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 you know, I mean, it's still, it's like, you know, it's like pulling teeth. It's so hard to get people to to be to to invest a little bit of time in yeah. in and be more efficient. The Pareto law: twenty percent of uh, effort to get eighty percent of results. Most people are using twenty percent of what Windows does or what their tool does, and they get yeah. of their yeah. of their results, and they are satisfied with that. And it's understandable if they have other priorities than than exploring and discovering and learning and taking yeah. time. But there are some, uh, maybe a 20% other users, or maybe there are only 5%, I don't know, that will want to, to become more productive and still continue to, to improve their, uh, their way, the way they work. And uh, so that's this 5% of people probably that will be interested in things like AutoAkey. It's not a, a mainstream tool. It will never be a mainstream yeah. tool. And the, the challenge for you as a, someone who loves this and love to communicate and you, you're a good evangelist of auto at key, yeah. the challenge is, to, is, is how to find these 5% of people. Right. And maybe there are only 2%, I don't know, <laughs> but how to, to find this niche when you have uh, uh, right. so many ways to communi communicate with so many people, but how to specialize. And I have the same yeah. challenge yeah. Uh, and you help me on that. Promoting quick access pop up because it's a tool that that once you get you, once you use it you get hooked to that and you cannot work on your computer without that. But those who never got this, maybe it's like crack or cocaine. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, those who never use it, they just do not know they are missing something and they just do not care if it takes a little more time to do their job or they're not annoyed by repeating the same task every day, every hour. And you and me probably, we can't 
afford to repeat something. You know, we need to put the string somewhere and just repeat it, you know, or... Which actually that, that honestly, um, this is 18 years ago, roughly. Um, I, I was using SPSS for statistics, right? That's what my background's in. And um, my predecessor from the job I was working used to manually do all this stuff where Monday through Thursday, she would do this, create these reports. And then, and then Thursday she'd share it. And then she had Friday to like do other stuff. But then next Monday, right, it started over. And I'm like, there is no way I'm, I'm doing this. So I looked into how to automate the, the, and so I started learning macros and SPSS. Um, and that was, it's, it actually uses syntax uh, and programming and functions. And so I started learning that in SPSS. And then I, I brought in Excel and was doing it there. And I got it down to where it took about 20 minutes and it wasn't even, you know, it was 20 minutes for it to work. And mostly it was like five minutes for me to actually do this stuff. And probably more reliable. Than it was in the long run. Right. It was, um, and it was actually, run, yeah, after your debugging, that's right. That, yeah. Cause yeah, I was consistently wrong, you know, at the beginning on some things. <laughs> um, but it was, it was that, that, that's part of my, I think my nature is like, I am not gonna, I say waste my time. Right. I, but it's, it's, it's more of like, I just can't, I can't get myself to just redo the same thing over and over. Right. I'm like, there's gotta be a way to, 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 uh, um, do it faster and more reliably and whatever. Um, yeah. So, uh, and some other people don't like to uh, to uh, search, to read, to yep. learn, you know, to yep. because there's an effort there, and some people would prefer to do many things else, you know. Yep. So it depends on the the type of user, and yeah, yeah. So I'm curious. Of course, those that are more techy, you know, programmers, developers, yep. system administrators, you know, uh, statistic guys, yep. uh, information management people, they are more. Uh, um, likely yeah. be interested by that. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, cause I have, I have shown my share of programmers, some of the stuff. And I, I think you're right. The adoption rate is higher, but it's not a slam dunk. All of them, a lot of them still, I think you get set in your ways of this is how I do things. And you just don't want to change. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not me. It's not relevant, whatever. Um, hey, I, so I wanted to draw on your, um, your history. So as a, you, you mentioned earlier, you used to oversee, you know, a department or whatever, a group of people. Yeah. Um, so put on that hat of, cause it's one of the other things I've run into in corporate world is literally my boss is telling me like, don't automate things. Right. Or we don't have time for you to, to learn how to do that. You know, um, just go get it done and always just get it done and keep doing, even though it, it's, it's like, it has to happen every, every week or whatever. Right. What, um, why do you think more bosses, even if you, even I agree with you that, a lot of the people themselves don't want to, they, they don't want to take the time to do whatever, but you know, a, a, a supervisor could say, this is what you need to learn. You know, you need to figure this out, even if they don't even know what it is. Why, why don't more supervisors either look for the skills already or try to encourage or, or force or whatever their employees to. Yeah. I don't know if it's the major reason, but one of the reasons is the risk of being dependent of, on the guy that knows how this automation work. And the day he leaves for yep. any reason, yep. there we're stuck with something that used to take right. now 20 minutes, but uh, it just does not work. And now it takes two days again to do that. Right. And we do not have, have these two days because the, this right. time it's, it's been, something yeah. else. You know? right. So I would right. say it's the major um, uh, reason I can see. And the solution to that is to have a good IT support. Yeah. depending on the company, the size of the company, to have a good IT support for automation. And I think also, I may be wrong, but I think that IT people and IT management will not see this kind of tool as being something that is serious and being something that can well, be risk, right? reliable and right. part of their uh, approved software and being right. supported being updated with new version, checking compatibility when something new happens, does everything still work? You know, these kind of things that are normal for an SAP installation or a, a SharePoint installation uh -huh. Uh -huh. for something that is free, like auto at key. Right. It's something else we discuss when it's free, it's perceived to be of lower right. value and it's not yes. really the case. It's something else anyway. But um, so it, it would require a, an IT manager that believes in that, that will make sure that there are always uh, at least two members of his team 
being uh, fluent with uh, AutoAD key, regardless the application, but let's take AutoAD key as an example, yep. fluent with it, that will know the, um, the installed uh, scripts running, that will be able to react quickly if something goes wrong, because these scripts will become critical for the, uh, the operations. Yep. And if one leaves, there's at least another that is also aware. Depending on the size of company, of course, for thousands of employees and right. companies, they have bigger IT department. But even there, sometimes IT departments are very small for the size of the company. Yeah, it, yeah, it varies. And, and they yeah. don't, have, don't even have enough resource to update the phone system right. or to update, uh, you know. So, um, so that's, to me, the key is, is to have IT support and um, it's not necessarily there. Earlier, I mentioned I was learning Python. What I didn't mention was the main impetus for that was my boss said, like, what if you get hit by a bus and no one else yeah. here knows auto hotkey? Yeah. And he wanted me to, to do everything in Python. So I said, I, it's, I, I don't, I love auto hotkey. I'm not tied to auto hotkey in that, like, I, I'm committed to it. So I said, okay, it'd be good for me. You know, he's going to, he's letting me during work learn Python. Hey. That's awesome, right? I'm fine with it. And after that, like year or so into it, where everything I would try to do, I would figure out how to do it in Python, but it was not nearly the the things that like I was using AutoHockey for were very things that actually AutoHockey did really well that they did easily. And so even though I learned enough Python, I finally told them, look, I can do it in Python, but it takes me three times as long, you know, and it's and it's not as consistent and reliable. So I've done enough and I'm like, hey, someone, if someone knows Python, they can look at AutoHotKey and in, I think on a, you know, minutes, a few minutes, look at the code and tweak it and stuff. It's not, yeah. it's not a hard language to, to pick up. So that, yeah. My, my other thought on, on that is that AutoHotKey is not necessarily from the developer, the programmer point of view. Yo, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's not the most sexy uh, right. language and platform to learn for his next job because everybody is thinking of his next job. And, That's and interesting. That's really interesting. Plus yeah. or learning C sharp or you know, well, or, it's much better for learning how to develop with uh, SharePoint backend tools. You know, for example, no. is much. Uh, the payback can be much greater for them than learning AutoHotKey because AutoHotKey is not well adopted. If it was more adopted, there is, you know, it's, uh, uh, in yeah. French, we say la poule et l'oeuf, uh, the, um, the egg and the, uh, the chicken, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, so th there's also this, uh, this uh, obstacle that uh, to a key is not perceived as a, yeah, uh, a niche. professional uh, yeah. a plus to know it. It's, we yeah. know it is one, but... Well, and, and I'd say, you look at Windows PowerShell, right, and how it's been growing in the last couple of years and people have... And also, I would actually even take a step back and let's be even more, more um, closely related to auto hockey is auto it, right? And, and that's where... This is one of the little areas I'd say with auto hotkey is when you, when you truly have a programmer, from my understanding, programmers, they will, they prefer to use auto it over auto hotkey because auto it is a little stricter, I think, in how it, how it does some things. Um, and, and they're both, I think, equally powerful and do all, probably almost all the same stuff. But uh, programmers tend to like auto it over auto hotkey oh, yeah. and noobs, it's just easier to step into auto hotkey. I never use uh, auto it. I just saw that it was quite similar to a uh, key from a language and a coding point of view. I've never used it. It is overall. It um I've I've I can't say I've I've used it. I've downloaded it, installed it, I've looked at the script, I tried running a little bit, but it, it really was, you know, a couple of days where I was just looking at it. Um but I've talked with enough people who have used both and and that's the input they, they generally have is that it's it's more strict in defining some things where auto hotkey, it, it, you know, like just the yeah, simple example. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and there are some um, danger or pitfalls, uh, of course, yeah. coming with the, uh, the openness and the, um, the free, uh, free coding that you, uh, yeah. so, uh, if you are not, um, in, depending on what you do, if you're coding macro just to automate things and have repetitive tasks to be done faster, then it's very good. Uh, when you're using it to develop a program that will yeah. be a few thousands of lines of code, or yeah. mine is uh, close to 20,000 lines total now. So you have variables that can be used here and there. And so, and if you do not have a good habit of 
initialize, initializing your variables or resetting the content of your, this is just an example here, and having a good structure for your code, it can become uh, like in the old time, in the first days of uh, basic, when a code was called a spaghetti code, yeah, because of go-tos, because all you had, yeah. all you had at that time, there was not go sub to, a, to yeah. go sub is to do something and come back after. You know, there was no such thing, so it was go to only. So it was a kind. If you, if you were, it was, if it was poorly designed, it was really hard to maintain because of this spaghetti code. But you could do the same or something similar using AutoHotKey now if you go just like. And coding anyway, coding uh, yeah. without the uh, structure. Yeah, a little off topic, but that's, um, I'm jumping ahead because I have a question here later, but um, when I started learning how to use functions, um, it, it that is my biggest one of like, wow, it, it really allowed me to program so much more concise and, you know, repeatable and-, and Safely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, thinking about, and if you want to just stick with QAP, that that's fine. Um, I'm curious in general of people, if you have any knowledge of this, of people, can you describe the typical user that does use QAP? Do you know anything about their age or gender or years of experience or if they're working in corporate world or anything like that? Not much. Okay. I receive a email from them. Uh, some of them uh, subscribe to a Google group for support. Mm -hmm. Some of them also subscribe to a private group for beta testing. But all we discuss mainly is uh, the program itself, not necessarily the context where it's used. Uh, with a few exceptions for, for example, someone working in a very large corporation that is trying to advocate the use of a quick access pop-up in, in his company, having some success doing that in, but it's a company all around the world. So I know there is this, this, um, uh, this uh, person, but um, no, I couldn't tell. I think it's more men than women. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say my guess would be 80% men, 20% wow, okay. women yeah. from the communication I receive. Uh -huh. um, I couldn't tell about age, but there are some, uh, some um, I, would, I would not say old people like me, but some people of my age <laughs> or more. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, um, uh, I've done with your help some surveys about the usage of quick access pop-up, but never about who they were, who users were. Yeah, because- Something uh, could be done at some point. Yeah, but I, and which you, you alluded to it earlier, is uh, putting your finger on, so my background is in, you know, um, I have a master's in market research and I did statistics. And so a big part of that often is profiling and helping businesses better understand who their customers are, right? And so typically, like, let's say you do a segmentation study or still, uh, you know, study your customers, you go in and you, you get things like their age and gender and ethnicity and their job title and where they live and all those things. And what you're trying to do is to say, okay, how is this group of people different than the general population of wherever I'm looking? Because that difference will then allow me to go find more of those people, right? I can go out and say, oh, I want to actually like men, yeah. was, it's a strong one. Cause I know in our auto hotkey and our, our webinars and other stuff, it's, it's even higher. I'd say it's like 90, 95% male. Um, but I think it's also cause they're, they're actually programming, right? That's not just using, using your tool. Um, yeah. It's the IT world that is like that. Also. Yeah. Um, but it's, that's the hard, I think the hard thing for, for your tool is you purposely, it's, you've, you're, you made a tool that you don't have to be a programmer for, that it's really easy to, to set up and everything. And so you'll, it's, my, my point is, it, it's not going to have a very tight profile, right? There's not going to be like, here's, here are more people that are like this, right? I think it's more about the, which we've discussed on other things, the, the attitudes of those people of being interested in like productivity, efficiency yeah. type things, you know, maybe macros type and, of thing. And liking, uh, not being a technophobe, be liking yeah. technology, liking yes. to play yeah. with their computer. And if right. they hate their computer, that's the last thing they would want to do. Well, which is ironic because those should be the ones that if you hate doing it, you're being yeah, more efficient with it, right? But yeah. I hear you, I agree, <laughs> yeah. It's There's one characteristic about my users that I, I can tell is, uh, yeah. 
in what country and in what what language they use the application. Yeah. Uh, Access pop-up is translated in 10, available in 10 languages. And I have some statistics about where, in what language it's used. I know also from where country users are by their, um, I have statistics about their Windows locale, you know, uh, are they- Yeah, the system, yeah, yeah. US yeah. English uh, Windows or do they have a German Windows or, you know? Right. So, uh, that way, I know that, of course, there's a lot of users from, from United States and Canada, where I live. A lot of French users from Ke Quebec, which is the province I live in Canada. Yep. But also a lot of users from France in French, from Germany, using the German version, from um, Dutchland, Peiba, uh, Netherlands, uh, using the Dutch version, uh, Italian, uh, Spanish. So there's a lot of users also in Europe much not much that i know of in south africa south america or central america even if the application is available in in spanish i hear less user coming from the mm. south more from from europe mm. and um, and since a few months i don't know, maybe one year now uh, um, quick access pop up also work with Rus russian keyboards uh, Wow. There, there would be a lot to say about Russian keyboards, but we don't want to talk yeah. about that now. But uh, they are very different from uh, U.S. or Canadian yeah. keyboards, and it was not to me just too hard to to test it and to. But at some point, I, I was able to, um, uh, to to solve these issues, and now it's also available in Russia, and there are also users from this country. But uh, yeah, I can also tell that I'm, from my experience, users from some countries will be more uh, uh, prone to support the application. You know, uh, I don't know if we mentioned that it was a free tool, a freeware, a quick access pop-up. You did, yeah. And, and uh, that, um, but can, user can do donation to help me uh, pay for a cost for a website, a SSL certificate, uh, uh, executable file certification you know there's a lot of little cost a few hundreds here a few hundreds there, uh, hundreds there and i receive donation five ten twenty dollars uh user also some of them can support me on the monthly basis by giving just just one dollar a month for example but what i i saw is that users from europe are in my, from what I can see, uh, are more um, ready to support freeware than other countries. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let me, um, and just so we, because I have it handy here, let me share my screen. So yep. <clears throat> if anyone's interested, um, this is his website for quick access pop-up. And it, it is, a, it's an amazing tool. Um, I, I love it. I, I used to actually like, here's a good example. These are, these are my shortcuts to my folders that I use often, but he has stuff built into it where you can hit a button and, and build GUI. So I used to manually in auto hotkey build these GUIs. Um, and I can actually hit a different, this, the, like, this is my one. And because I've, I already had done all the work, I haven't converted my old ones over to, to John's tool. Um, Someday, maybe I, I'll take the time to do it, but um, now I just have a different hotkey. You're waiting for me to write a converter. Yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. <laughs> um, but it would literally take me hours like to write that other GUI, and, and now I can drag and drop and change the icon yeah. and build submenus. You could, submenus show, and, you could show the settings window just a second to sure, give an idea. Sure. Oh, other screen. It's on uh, your other screen. Yeah. So you have add edit buttons to add or change. You can you have the arrows to change the order of your menu items. Yeah, that's moving around. And then like these are, is it, yeah, this is so under here. So under here I have my this is all my syntax assist. So I have it for either for SQL, right? How to do stuff in SQL. And so this will pop up. These are snippets. They'll pop up in my editor. Um, so I can use a GUI to to basically pull up my templates that I predefined for things that I use frequently enough, but so frequent, not frequently enough where I can remember how to do them. And it's like, it just makes it so, like actually if I'm in here in, in studio, oh, by the way, what, I forget, what editor do you use for auto hot? Side for auto hot key. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Which is what I used forever. Um, and then I, um, now, now suddenly it's, oh, cause I'm in this, this, I think, no. It's saving now. Okay, yeah. There we go. So syntax assist, auto hotkey. And so 
well, this, this, this is the syntax for, I have it twice, but um, for reading in, if it's a variable path, um, um, so if it's a variable, sorry, that'd be the variable. Otherwise I can have the path. But this is, and this is one of those things with auto hotkey that to me, that like, I would wanna put this in quotes, right? I would think that I should have quotes, it's a string, I should have quotes around this, but I shouldn't. Um, and that's, those are the one of the little things that I think annoy people with auto hotkeys. You free, you know, I don't remember which yeah, one. And the, uh, the, the, the main obstacle for first, um, for first learning it is to understand when should I use the percentage and not use it. <laughs> well, and kind of two ways to build your, um, your uh, expressions. Uh, one is very simple, uh, and you use a, a percentage just to, to identify the variables that you want to insert in your, uh, uh, in your uh, action. And the other one is, um, yeah, you put an expression and there you, if you want to, to use text, you have to use quotes and uh, dot to, to concatenate qu uh, different piece. So there's a lot of um, little things to, yeah. and so you write code and then you say run and you will uh, take a, uh, Five or five or ten tries before yeah. it runs perfectly, <laughs> because yeah. only of small things like that. Uh, after some time, you get used to it and you do it the right way uh, the first time. But at the beginning, yeah. it's what, I, or it just doesn't work, and you don't understand why it doesn't work. So you you have to to find what's the wrong percentage somewhere. Right, um, that, and that's the one thing I would say that I at first hated, but ended up loving about Python was Python is very specific in that you have one way to do something. Like there's not in, in auto hotkey, there's several different ways where you can do loops or you yeah, can do other yeah. things, right? And in Python, there's one way. And yeah. so what's, at first it's, it's constraining, but in the long run, you just learn the one way and you're good to go. And yeah. it was like, you know, I, I gotta admit, after doing it for a while, I, I actually prefer yeah. that. I started program, doing programs with uh, visual, well, not visual basic at that time, turbo oh. basics. And, but at some point, or, or I don't remember, I don't remember, but it was ba yeah, basic on the Sinclair machine, the Timex computer, one $100 computer. Uh, I started with that. Uh, but at some point I, I used the turbo Pascal and, uh -huh. uh, and before that Pascal on Apple computer, on Apple II, uh, it was developed first for this computer and Modula 2, so these two languages are, are, have been um, created by the same guy, I think it's Nicholas Wirt. Oh. Um, and this guy was very um, um, strict on having to declare your variables and having to do things a, a certain way, which was a, which was a constraint, but uh, when you get used to it, you, you don't have eff effectively to, um, to wonder how, how did, how was it done? It, there's only one way to do a given thing. And because of that, the way I code now, I always use the same method to do something. Yeah. Uh, so that when I use my search tool to find something in my oh, code, yeah. I yeah, know it's a given, uh, yeah. yeah. So I all my variables are always re written the same way. Right. And uh, so, right. so there are some habits like that that will help you to maintain your code. Even if it's 20,000 lines long, mm -hmm. you, it can be easy to search and to navigate inside your tool. Yeah, I, I hadn't thought about it from the search um, point of view, but you're right. I mean, actually in, S, in SPSS, they, um, I, there's a, I put a slash, uh, sorry, a asterisk slash, slash, and then a, like a dozen slashes and then another um, asterisk, I think, or a period, sorry. But um, I, the guy I learned from, um, he, he said like, you don't have to have these in your macros. However, by including it in every macro, when you search for it, you can pull up all of your macros. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's, that's brilliant. So I yeah. stuck with it. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, my, my, my code, the code for a quick access pop-up, I don't know how many lines, I will just check. I'm in it now. It's 21,500 lines now. And some developers with auto at key or other program, it can drive me mad, drive them mad because they say you should never have a, a that long uh, script in yeah, yeah. one file. You should split it yeah. in modules yeah. in libraries. Right. And, right. and I understand that. But um, first, before quick access pop-up, it was called folders pop-up because the main use of it is to open folders in Explorer or in dialog box. Uh, 
that's the main benefit still today of yep. using this tool. But at that time, folders pop up was very small. And um, in fact, I started from a script that was on the Autoaki forum and just uh, uh, letting the, it was open source. So it was uh, possible for me to take it and improve it. And that's, uh, it's still open source. Uh, and and uh, so it, it, it grew, it grew. Uh, from a few thousand, from a few hundred lines to 20,000 lines. Yeah. But still in this, I can jump to one place to the other uh, very quickly using search yeah. and using bookmarks. So inside the editor I have, and most editor will have this, but not everybody use it. And myself, I was not using it a lot. That when I yeah. discovered that, yeah. I'm always putting... You see trace of where I'm working on, and then with the F2 key, I can jump to the different places I'm working on. It's equivalent to having to switch to different files because I would work on different yeah. modules of my program. And to me, it's still more efficient because I can, in one search, in one file, uh, make sure a given variable is uh, only where it has to be, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's a way of working that is not necessarily the... the the correct yeah. correctness well, yeah. Yeah. the most <laughs> the accepted yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah hey but, um, so uh, but, uh, uh, yeah well um so let's let's get back to auto hockey in general and this was interesting because over the weekend we, we chatted a little about this but um if uh if if someone comes to you and and we're talking about auto hockey here not qap right yeah um and, and you tried to explain auto hotkey to them, right? The benefits, because this was interesting, was the other day, I think you said, you've, you've never actually introduced anybody, at least straight Back, away. To, I don't remember someone coming to me asking about auto hotkey, you know? Uh -huh. So if you're talking with, about that with someone else, it's because you initiated yeah. the, uh, the conversation about it because you think it can be of, of help for this person. Um, to me, it's a kind of a secret tool that I'm using and that, that not necessarily something that uh, I have to talk about to others because mm -hmm. I know I'm part of these two or five person yeah, right. doing that. And right. uh, there's a high probability that the other person is just not interested into that. So uh, I don't remember if I tried to do that and, and give up but or just never... Yeah talked about that. There is one of my colleague and friend that is also using it. And uh, the two of us, uh, we, we, we knew ourselves uh, on the forum uh, about WordPerfect 5.1 macros, yeah. which yeah. was a very powerful macro uh, system inside WordPerf, the, 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 the word processor WordPerfect that maybe not everybody knows about now because right. it's quite uh, right. forgot. But at some point, it was the main a word processor. Oh, yeah. It was uh, it. Uh, yeah. for, for us before Windows. In fact, the I, decline of this tool was because of Windows. I, but yeah, uh, I, at that time, I was uh, pretty fluent with it. I wrote books. Uh, I didn't tell that I wrote a few books uh, about uh, computer programs uh, and internet uh, right. in the uh, before 2000. And uh, so at some point, I needed to, to find something about uh, WordPerfect macros. And I found this guy that I worked with a few times and uh, we are still uh, good friends. And uh, even if we work together and, <laughs> and uh, so this guy uh, was aware of uh, word perfect macros and aware of uh, uh, super key or pro key that we use before windows and now uh, to what key uh, uh, and he's a coder. This guy is, and so he's, he has the same profile. He has this two person profile, you know, uh, but oh. uh, in, in addition to that, I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, it's not for me natural to just talk about this to someone else. No. For you it is, isn't it? it? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've introduced a lot of people to it, um, but very few have adopted it, at least from, from what I can tell, right? It's, it's sad to me, but I call it the great thanks by they, they, you know, I'll spend an hour where I have a, I have an actual deck and actually I, at some point, maybe I should do that just as, I don't know, part of the webinar or what, but I'm like, this is what I cover in my hour of demonstrating a lot of the different functionality, right? And then I, I usually leave them saying, hey, let's just teach you hot strings and hot, and one hot key, right? And get them started. And, and they, every time it's like the same thing, they go, wow, that's, that's so amazing. Thank you so much. All right, see ya. 
you know, and they, they never like yeah. actually yeah. try to learn it. To, to, to give some time to make an effort yep. and um, they have other priorities. It's, I don't, do not blame them, but, but uh, they are missing something. Uh, yeah. But so how would you, let's pretend so you to do a questionnaire before just to filter out ah. people, you will take time to right. explain to them. <laughs> right. Psycho uh, psychological uh, uh, profile. <laughs> yeah. Let's, yeah. let's pretend though you're at a, a dinner party um, and, and someone hears that you work with AutoHotKey, right? And, and then it's not QAP. How would you describe what AutoHotKey is and does, you know, can do for them? If you did want to try to get someone to at least be interested in it, what would you, yeah. what would you mention? Uh, um, it's, <clears throat> it's a tool that will help you to, to uh, avoid repetitive tasks uh, with your computer. Um, that's the, the, the one sentence uh, yeah. explanation. From there, it depends on what you do and what you do repetitively. Yeah. If you're writing a, a, a book, uh, maybe you don't need a macro to write your book your, uh, you, <laughs> because you have to think about it. You cannot automate that. But well, if you but think a technical book where you have to put index entries and where you have to put table of content codes or you know or so there then of course word can help you automate yeah. your work but, with word but 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 uh, i'd argue though like in, in especially your example of a technical book um, often you'll have these longer words that you use frequently right and that's where for me hot strings are, are real like actually i used to have more likely than and less likely than because in research i'd always say x person was more likely than this to do whatever right and yeah. and i i would just type MLT period, and it would put in more likely the end for me. Um, and it was just, it's, it's little things, but yeah. Um, yeah. Which, but the, these little things if individually can often be done. Uh, if you use only word, there's a lot in word to automate your work. If you yes. use only Excel, there's a lot in Excel to automate yeah. your work, Agreed. Agreed. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. as soon as you have to work with different, excuse me, different programs, and you want to exchange information from one to the other, and you have to do cut and paste from from the website to your Excel uh, sheet, and you know, yeah. there then uh, Excel cannot cannot help you, but Auto at Kit can, can help you. And there's a lot of uh, web-based application now, and people having to interact with these application and their local um, spreadsheet or. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, or PowerPoint file, or no, and then uh, using Auto at Key can be of great help just yeah. to to cut and paste something in the, and then to do some processing on that thing, making it uh, the way it, uh, it it has to be before it it, it becomes right. pasted. Right. So very small things that can be improve a lot your work. Yeah. Now there's also the um, the the two hour process that you want to to make uh, five minutes. Right. There's something else and you need more experience doing that, yeah. but it's also another reason to, to use these kind of tool yeah. to make a, a, a lengthy and um, yeah. In, uh, yeah. Invest your process time. to be, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, actually, so, you, and I'm, I thought of this earlier, um, but I forget exactly what we're talking about, but it, it was one of those things also, which you, you alluded to a minute ago with talking about repetitive tasks in, and part of, for me, it's been as people often say, well, I don't do repetitive thing, you know, and like it, it's the ability to, to realize you do actually Detective. repetitive things. Yeah. You do them all the time, but which is what we, we talked about over the weekend, right? was like often, like I, I, even I will admit, I still don't know how often I do some things because it's just innate, right? I just, it's ingrained in me. I go and do this thing all the time, but it's normal to repeat. Yeah. And you don't necessarily repeat exactly the same way. So right. sometimes right. automation has to take into account that uh, the yeah. email address will be different each time, yeah. but it's always the same but things it's around. Yeah, yeah, it follows yeah. a format, right? And that's where I think that's where when you start learning how to program, it makes it easier to start identifying those repetitive parts and isolating what actually is the repetitive part and what is different and, and how to, in, in, you know, still automate part of it, but not necessarily all yeah. of it. And you can have a few pieces and then at some point you can put them together and you would use yeah. variables to handle or, or yeah. dialog box, just a question. That's What's right. the email address? Right. Da, 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 go, and then it will continue. So instead of three parts, it can become one part yeah. with two paths 
for yeah. questions or for choice. Yeah. Uh, which is, yeah. is, by the way, you, you also mentioned earlier, which is what, like when I was working in corporate world, um, I had several systems that like one, actually one was a SharePoint um, site where I, we, would, we stored our stuff. And then the other one, I had to enter it like either into our email um, tool for sending out millions of emails, right? Or I had another one um, where we would enter stuff for our website. And I would have to go into one and copy and come back over here and paste and come back and copy and come back and paste. And so I was, I would automate that whole process. Um, but it was, it's that understanding of like, Hey, here are two different systems that don't talk to each other. And yet um, they can't, they, Oh, where I was, where I was going with that was I tell people I don't automate the entire thing and have it where I never even check it. I like to automate the process, but leave it like open where I can do a quick review and make sure that like everything was okay, right? And I, I think part of the things yeah, that, that- And you have to repeat this review periodically because uh, things yeah. can change in what you automated. That's right, yes. And, and that's why some maybe IT people will prefer to build something between two apps behind the scenes or in the back end to have one system produce a file that the other system will read and you know, and all this being done very um, uh, systematically. Well, what you do when you use auto at key is that yeah. you're working on the front end. And That's a great point, yeah. yeah. Instead of having things right. being done, so right. you have to check for, um, uh, to review your code even if it is back end because things can change sure. even on the back end, but there are more risk of things to change on the front end. It can be just an alert that will pop up from another program that will right. just mess yeah. up your automation because it was not supposed to be there and it, it just took the focus of your mouse some, somewhere else and yeah. it stopped working because of that. So there's, there are a few risks that you, so you have to, to review what is done. You yeah. cannot put something and then go take a coffee and necessarily come back after and just continue. You have to review that is yeah. everything has been done correctly. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this. Um, the the back end side of the automation where you're doing this stuff also, that on average costs a lot more to actually get it set up and done. And I think that's one of the reasons why managers, especially, also they when when I talk about automating something, they're thinking it's you know, hundred hours or something to do it or tens of thousands of dollars or whatever. And I'm like, no, it's it's usually a couple hours, right? I can. I can get something close enough where I can then review it and now it automatically saves me time, but I'm still reviewing it. And, and that's, a, I think, a barrier that I've, I've had with trying to get people, they, they think I'm, I'm talking about tens of thousands of dollars or at least 5,000. Yeah, you know, but more. the so-called automation platforms, just having the platform will cost in the six figures. Some of them, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's very different. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I um, I hopefully I haven't asked him yet, but I'm hoping to get Tank um from the forum, right? Uh, he 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 did the the um RPA is that what it's called the program Process robotic automation something like that. Yeah, but um, that's what he does for a living. I think he uses UiPath if I remember right, or maybe it's one of the no, maybe it's one of the other ones. But his his the the tool they use, like you said, it's like a hundred grand a year for the license for it, um and. Um, anyway, I was hoping to talk to him about, like, have this conversation as well of understanding why businesses in general. But then it's for a large corporation, it's not it is. for sure. small companies. It's not for a, a, right. a, a small right. business, retail business, or you know, it's it's for a large corporation with IT departments and right. Yeah, yeah, and 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 they do want to automate the back end. They are automating more likely the back end and the yeah. entire process. Right, that's the goal. And they need to have application that support being uh, part of a back-end process, being able to export in a yeah. given format and then yeah. the automation well, it process this to make it readable by the other app, but this yeah. app has to be able to read and import yeah. the data or in, using a file is one way. There can be also more live communication between programs, but uh, all this has to be uh, avail make av made available in these apps. Yeah. But when you're doing it with auto you can do it with any program almost some program will just have some weird interface that you cannot interact with them but like a, a game for example some game are very well e even to, then to you code. can you can usually scan for images right and and do yeah. some stuff but it, it's not as reliable and consistent no but, you need to be quite advanced to yeah. to to scan images oh. yeah but uh, 
Yeah. The other one I wanted to add there that was really fascinating when that chat with Tank was he was talking about, and I forget the right name of it. It's like the logging of every of all the stuff you do. You, um, they want to have a record of exactly what happened, the credentials, and and something with you know secure login where it's it's, yeah. it's tracked. Um, and Auto Hockey yeah. has nothing built in around. No. That. Also, there are things like a transaction management, so you can roll back if something go wrong. Uh, you know, you have this in database and you have this in this kind sure. of process. So you're starting a, an invoice processing and if at some point something go down or there's an error, uh, the client will not be uh, charged twice, for example, because there's right. a rollback that will manage that correctly. Right. But, you know, to a key, it could be uh, something didn't go to the end. So re you restart it, but part of it would be done twice if you do not take care of looking at the result of what you've automated. So it's not uh, as, reliable, as reliable, but you can still save time, including the time to review that it's been done correctly. Um, and so uh, um, um, switching gears again, so my very last question I have here, and I'm fine if we keep talking too as well, but um, was do you have any examples of, other like you know something you're willing to share of personal even if you don't share the script right it's just the concept of have you automated other things for your computer like anything with your music stuff yeah um not using a toilet key i i am for my i'm doing a weekly show maybe you're referring to that the weekly music show it's in french it's on mixcloud the platform mixcloud if you want to search for this it's mixcloud then you search for jean Lalonde. And, but it's in French with mostly music from Montreal. Uh, but um, so I'm doing it every week. So it is part of the kind, it's the, it's the kind of thing that is repetitive. Um, and I, for this, of course, I'm using quick access pop-up to open my windows when I need to open the recording program or the editing program or iTunes. I'm using uh, the Apple app iTunes to manage my, my music. But what I've done is to create a, a template, a Windows, not a Windows, an Excel, yeah, thank you, to open an Excel template uh, to build the, 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 the lineup of a show with the calculation of the timing and um, uh, the uh, insertion of my, what I want to say. So I've made it using an Excel template because all I needed to automate was available inside this tool. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm thinking of using uh, auto at key. I, I have very little macros. Like for example, I, I, I always invert two letters, you know, it's, I'm dyslexic. Yeah. Is it the same word in English? Yes. So, am so I. I'm yes. not, yeah. I'm not, uh, uh, very dyslexic, but for a few things like in inverting two letters. So I build the macro that I just press a key and it will automatically uh, reverse the two last letters. You know, these kind of little things, uh, that I've done, uh, what else? Um, so I have a kind of little, a little script that runs open with windows and that will, uh, give me access to a few keys like that. But, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking of, but okay. most of my work is doing more doing program like quick access pop-up or other programs like, uh, uh CSV body, a program to process, right. uh, CSV text file. Um, so these kind of things. Do you actually do, yeah, and do you have any other, I don't recall, do you have any other libraries or functions that you've published? Oh, there's one that is uh, fun that I, I can show you. I, th sure. I don't think I ever showed it to you. Uh, let me share my screen. Let me start it first uh, yep. to find it. No, I'll just show you how, how I launch it using quick access pop-up. That's better. Share screen, desktop. So under music, I have this my tunes cover. And this application is reading my iTunes library looking for tunes without cover. So it's launching iTunes now. It was not already launched. Mm -hmm. Now it's launched. Uh, we didn't mention that from auto at key, you can also control other programs. So this program here is written in auto at key, but it can use uh, an API, an interface to call uh, iTunes in the back end. We mentioned the difference between front end and back end. We can also do some back end things using uh, using Autoatkey. So for a given album here, there are these tunes here as no um, no cover. So I can click search to find an image of this oh. album, cool. copying the image, and here I can paste the 
uh, I can, excuse me, load key, load clipboard. So from the clipboard, I'm loading the image yep. here. Yep. And now I can select all the tunes okay. on the album yep. and say and paste to selected. Yep. And it will paste yep. this cover to every, I hope it's the right image because <laughs> I just <laughs> right. read quickly. But right. anyway, yeah. so this, uh, with, for this tool, I, I, I had to explore two areas of expertise. One is how to control uh, iTunes because I can mm -hmm. go here and select in which of my iTunes playlist I want to search for um, tunes without cover. Mm -hmm. And also add to play with um, graphical interface, GPI something. I don't remember, it's a long time I worked on that. Maybe you know it. Uh, where yeah. you can draw or put images in different area of your screen. And uh, having the possibility to say, uh, if I want to make it small, let's say, reload now uh, yeah no I it will save and reload oh, was it reloaded not anyway it gives you an idea of another tool uh, where I, I put much work on the interface the visual interface and also the um, uh, the, the API to exchange with, um, mm -hmm. with iTunes. There. Cool. So it's another example. Yeah. Uh, I've done some, uh, also a library to process CSV file. And that's, that's it. That's the main stuff. When, when I saw the, the, the interest for quick access pop up, it took all my time, my available time. There's more, I have more time now than in the last years, but uh, I put my time on quick access on folders pop up first, then that became quick access pop up because yep. there was a good response from users from, for that tool. So uh, it's more fun to work on something where you have users Absolutely. feedback and the participation yep. in the uh, work, uh, the uh, Google group and these, uh, yep. these kind of interactions. That's the fun for, for me, that's my fun is to, uh, to have a way to exchange some time only about technical things. Uh, but sometime with some people, uh, so what's the weather in in uh, in in, um, in Spain now? Uh, how do you feel with the, the the heat that you have, or you know, just these kind of little exchange? And there is one person that came in Montreal, and uh, we had a lunch together just to have a face to face cool. yeah. uh, uh, meeting. So that's a different way to uh, to have some exchange with uh, with people. I was thinking about. I just don't think I'd get any takers, but I was thinking about trying to have like an auto hotkey forum get together, right? A, you know, physical thing. And just it, the, my problem, is, I actually have found, I think three, three or four people in the Dallas Fort Worth area where, who I've met with individually. I had yeah. one meetup where I scheduled it and only one guy showed up, which I, I don't care. Right. It's like to me, I, yeah, the you more I try trying. to keep trying, but yeah, um, I was thinking about in Las Vegas. <clears throat> yeah. Really and actually, bundle it with the casino and uh, Celine Dion show. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, that's actually not a bad I idea. If I do it, I should do it in Vegas because that'll, that'll give other people a reason to, to actually go, right? Is, yeah. Is Maybe to have a company to yeah. pay for them because they will also find a congress or, you know, a, a <laughs> place to, to attend. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but um, yeah, I, I love auto hotkey. Uh, well, I love being able to work smarter, not harder. Right. And auto hockey to me is one of the best, easiest things I can use to do that, um, which that, that's, yeah. that's why I love it. And continue your good job of uh, promoting and being an evangelist of uh, yeah. automation and auto hotkey because uh, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people who discovered that by, because yeah. of the work you do. Maybe you can be at uh, some point uh, um, uh, deceu deceived or um, deception uh, of having some people not. Uh, catching or not using it for real but there's for sure oh, many gotcha. people who did who yeah. did in fact yeah. uh, understand and and continue uh, because of the the, um, the the start you gave them the, the well the yeah and, and that was the the main impetus um, of of the this interview for me was um, I wanted to I think a lot of people just don't quite see how, how to use auto hotkey. And, and that's why I wanted to get more people just talking about how I, you know, how you use it individually. You're, you're a little different because you have this amazing program you've already created. 
Um, and so I think that took up more of a focus on, on this one. But with other people, I want to get into more about how they use it. Because, again, it's one of those things people, it, it has so much functionality, right? And I actually, I didn't mention this earlier. I, when I first started using AutoHotKey, I used it for hot strings and hotkeys for like four years, three, three years, four years, somewhere in there where that's all I did. And I thought I was the cat's meow. I thought I was amazing. And I was because... The hot strings alone, because it helped with my programming, I could pull up my syntax. It, I was so much faster at doing everything. It was amazing. And yet then I, I switched jobs. I moved over to information technology and in, in, in the database and email group. And um, I started learning um, object-oriented programming and web scraping. Um, and and yeah. that, that was like, oh, oh, my God, it opened up so many doors. And then I learned about just general APIs in general of connecting with services and the, the world we live in now with all these services out there that you can automate like you did with iTunes, right? You can, you can programmatically on, in the, in, on the background go and connect to them and compared to web scraping, yeah, things change, but it, it's much rare where things change. So I can write something and it stays working. Um, and it's other than the authentication thing, which that for me is all, almost always the, that takes me more time of getting the authentication down. It's not actually doing the queries for the, the service. It's the stupid authentication. I wish they standardized, you know, that because it would be so much easier. But um, there's always some um, challenges doing these. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but boy, once you get past it, man, it's, it's so fun because almost so a lot of them are paid, right? Don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of free ones out there. I'm doing stuff with real estate for, for one of my partners and doing things. Um, we're doing stuff with a, a survey tool I use to go and grab our survey and our data and get it actually. So I used to spend days taking our survey data and, and, and manipulating it, cleaning it and doing all the stuff that's, even though I wrote some tools to make it easier, it, it still, it, it took me several days to get a working data set, you know, a file and the, the structure I needed to import it in Tableau and do the, the graphing and stuff. And, and now we'll have it where it's, it's a couple minutes and it's automated, you know, and, it, and it's just going to be, it's, it's mind blowing, right? I'm, I'm excited about that. But um, yeah, there's so many, when you start looking at APIs and even then, the, I mean, the, there's, I think one of our webinars, we talked about the, um, I think we came up with like maybe eight different ways you can connect to it pr programmatically interact with other programs. Right. And, and, you know, it's just almost everything you do to some degree, you can automate it. It, it, there's levels, like right? You know, this is probably on average the best way, but there is, you know, the, it's most reliable and, and quickest. Uh, and then you kind of keep, working your way down well what you know do i have to send keystrokes sometimes you have to send keystrokes right which even then that's often very reliable but um it, it's one of those like i just hate doing the same thing over and over yeah awesome is there um anything else you want to add no i thank you for this opportunity to have a awesome well thank you um had a great time and mm -hmm. Um, and also, thank you for, you've co-hosted several of our web, I think three, right? Three of our webinars um, now, and, and that's a, it's a big help. But I, I think the, some of the stuff you covered, especially the last, the file encoding one, um, I learned a lot of, that was stuff I that I think. By preparing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it's interesting because I think even a lot of programmers um, would can learn from that one because it's not something that often I think you learn, right? It's something you deal with, but you don't, there's. I tried yeah, searching. Don't try to understand why, why yeah. and how. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The 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 behind the scene, you know. Yeah. So anyway, so, awesome. Thank you again, John. Yeah. We'll talk Bye. soon. Bye. Bye.